Alright, third time's a charm. What's going on everybody? Leaky Valve here. Welcome back to the channel. Today we are playing some F1 2020. Oh, and I say playing, I mean we're only driving around at Bahrain with a little bit of fishtail action from my boy Lando here, getting a little invalid lap time action. Don't mind if I do, and don't mind me, I'm not the best at this game. But, I do love me some Formula One, and this last week, I decided to send out a, I guess a guessing game to a couple of buddies of mine that are also big Formula One fans. Now, I sent them out kind of your standard questions for the year, you know, who's going to who's gonna take the driver's title and who's going to take the constructors and so on and so forth. So I wanted to go over in a YouTube video my thoughts. And at least while you're listening to this, it's not just you staring blankly into my eyes. Ah, but at least a little bit of race action because this past weekend, today is now March 16th. I've had to record this video three times now. Uh, this past weekend we had winter testing completed, done, booted, suited, ready to get executed. We are ready to go for the season in two weeks time. So I want to go over a few of my picks. So we'll do the standard ones, we'll do the constructors, we're going to do the driver's title. Uh, after those two, we're going to get into who I think is going to be or are going to be the most consistent rookies this year. Following that up, we're going to do the best rookie overall, right? That's that's not how well you did this race or that race. It's just who finishes the highest in the point standings of all the rookies. As it's nice that we actually have more than one or two this year. Following that up, we're going to do the most improved driver and or team this year that I think will arise or will come. We're going to go over who I think the worst team is going to be. We're going to pick a race this year that is going to have the most action. Where, like, what, what track do I think is going to have the most action this year? I feel like there's one more. I need to get around this corner so I can look down at my notes that I have on my page. Ah. And lastly, I'm going to pick someone to win a race that doesn't race for Red Bull or Mercedes. Because I feel like picking Lewis Hamilton to win a race would just be a very easy point to score on uh, on this. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Constructors, I genuinely believe that Red Bull has what it takes this year. I don't know how much work Mercedes did on this year's car. So I know they said they were pretty much done with development for the 2020 car last year. like three quarters of the way through the season and you know, honestly like the Red Bull looked really good in testing Max was driving that thing fearlessly I think it might take a race weekend or two for Perez to get in you know Sergio Perez form but I I think he's got it in him and I think he's he's got a legitimate a legitimate hand in helping Red Bull compete against the Mercedes All right if they can finish two three in a lot of races, or if they could finish one three, you know, pinching Lewis be between them, that would be that would be huge for their constructors. Now for the driver, ti driver title itself, I think it's gonna be Lewis, Sir Lewis Hamilton. And I don't think that y you can't not root for the guy. He's a fantastic driver. As much as he complains about his freaking tires going off, he's, he, you know, he does, he gets the job done and he usually gets the job done in spectacular fashion so I, I i genuinely think lewis can do it again i think he can become the immortalized racer that he pretty much already is and potentially call it quits at the end of the season or call it quits when his contract is done with mercedes i i just i i don't i don't see anybody personally beating him right maybe it's max this year if max has the right car and Max has the right luck, because luck is going to play a huge part in the fact that that Red Bull's got to stay on the road, right? Maybe a couple times that Mercedes breaks down. But, uh, alas, I think it's going to be Lewis. It's kind of dumb to root against them sometimes. It's just, you know, 
it always works for the guy. Next, we're going to go over who I think the most consistent rookie or rookies are going to be. And I'm going to take the team of Haas. So I'm going to take Schumacher and Mazepin both. And I think that bringing in two young guns like that, brand new into F1, new money in from Mazepin's dad, you know, big name in Schumacher coming back. It's, it's going to be really interesting to see what these two can do on the track. Although I, I don't know how confident I am in that Haas car. Haas has had their share of problems before. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, go back and watch Drive to Survive Seasons 1 and 2 and you'll see exactly what I mean. But I, I think that if they're consistently pushing for top 15s, maybe the odd time under a safety car restart, someone squeaks into the top 10, it'd be really good to see. So I, I think that the two of them are going to be the most consistent rookies. Now as for the top rookie, I'm going right with Sonoda. He looked so fast in that Alpha Tauri. The last day of the last day of testing, he was just throwing the car around, absolutely fearless. Put in the second fastest lap time of the entire session on Sunday. I think Sunday. Well, it would have been Sunday my time. Might have been Saturday theirs. I, I just, I think Yuki's got it in the bag, to be quite honest with you. He looked phenomenal in that car. I think Alpha Tauri's done a fantastic job with whatever development they did in uh, in cooperation with Red Bull. And I just, I think he's got it. I think he's got a good chance of being a top 10 driver's points guy this year. Now for the shitty stuff. As much as it pains me to say, I don't think Alfa Romeo is going to be this good this year. So for my worst team, I think it's going to be Alfa Romeo. Now, don't get me wrong, Kimi Raikkonen looked good in the car. I think he put in the most laps out of anybody in the session. But I just, I don't, I don't know. It seems like every year Alfa Romeo looks good and then it comes race time and Giovinazzi and Raikkonen can't seem to put anything together. I hope that any of the problems that plague them from Ferrari get resolved with that Ferrari car and the powertrain and the engine and the gearboxes and whatnot last year. I hope that stuff is kind of fixed, I guess. And I hope they can put out some good cars this year. But I, I think Williams can do a better job than them this year. The car looks great on the track. The livery is actually really, really slick looking. As opposed to just kind of being a bland white car with some colored decals on it maybe a blue stripe or two i'm glad that the car actually pops looked really good under the bahrain lights here but i think it will be alfa romeo finishing last in constructors this year i could be wrong i probably will be wrong but you got to make some you gotta take some chances i guess sometimes now as for the most improved driver and team i'm going with the guy who i'm driving as right now me i'm just kidding but I will be taking the car that I'm driving right now in McLaren. That's a lot of time deleted. And I'm going to take Lando as the most improved driver. I know that he got a third place last year, and it was probably one of the best team radios of the year. Scenario, scenario, scenario seven. Let's go overtake button. Here we go. But I, I think that he's going to continue to grow as a driver. I think that team is going to continue to grow as a modern day team. And I think having Ricardo in their back pocket is, is gonna really give McLaren a good shot at taking third in the constructors again. Uh, but instead of, instead of just fighting for that third spot, I got faith that they can actually take that third spot instead of having to leave it down to the last race and make it dependent on who finishes where. Because it'd be nice to have them or see them lock it up a few races before the end of the season. I need to also pick a driver outside of Red Bull or Mercedes to win a race. I'm going to give you two. I'm going to go Daniel Ricciardo, who's going to win one in a McLaren. And I think Sebastian Vettel, if that car can get to where I know it can get to, 
right? If they can turn the pink Mercedes into the green Mercedes, I think Vettel's got one in them too. So Ricardo and Vettel to win races outside of Red Bull and Mercedes. Because I, I think that all four of those guys are going to win one. I, I think Perez probably for sure wins one. Obviously, I think Hamilton's going to win one. Bottas usually pulls one out of his ass at the beginning of the year. And Verstappen's probably going to win one somewhere too. So it's got to be outside of there. So Ricardo and Hamilton for that. And lastly, where do I think the most exciting race is going to be this year? Now, I don't think it's going to be at any one place in particular, but I do think that if they do go with it, I think that the race that they have, or the races that they have the, the sprint qualifying in, I think those are gonna be the best races of the year with the reverse grid qualifying. Because that reverse grid qualifying race actually means something for points, it's not just it's not just a race to see where you qualify for Sunday. That race has a little bit of merit to it. So if you potentially, or if you can intentionally sandbag, you're not getting any points, which, you know, if Mercedes decides, well, we need points in the race on Sunday, and Red Bull's like, well, we can do it both. You know, maybe Red Bull starts a little bit further in the pack on Sunday, but they've still got points coming in from Saturday. So it actually makes teams think like, well, we do have to push for both because we need the points. And I think it's also going to be very interesting how the teams decide to run the cars on Saturday. Because it's like it's a race, right? If, if all the teams are going to run their cars at whatever, call it 80%, then okay, all the cars are run at 80%. But you got to think if they don't and they're running them flat out, you're not just running your car flat out on a normal Saturday for qualifying, which... For a high-end team you know maybe Lewis Hamilton puts in six laps seven laps maybe if he has an issue on one of his qualifiers at six laps at full power light fuel sticky tires whereas if it's the race itself that's putting a lot more stress on the car so it'll be interesting to see how the teams cope with that it'd be interesting to see what the teams decide to do and how hard they're running the cars and if running the car hard on saturday means that more stuff breaks down on sunday i think it's going to make for some really interesting racing so that's all i got i uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video please leave it in the comments below what you guys think is going to happen if you got to go back the beginning of the video pause it where i list everything on uh all the categories and 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 fill out the sheet for yourself I'm, I'm curious to see what other people are thinking curious to see other people's thoughts uh if you don't know i stream on twitch mondays wednesdays and fridays 7 to 10 p.m mountain standard time uh leading into formula or f1 2021 i'll probably play f1 on mondays I'm playing halo on wednesdays and then it's usually a mixed bag of games for Friday. Uh, but I'd love to see you there. Drop by, stay high, give me your thoughts live. Be fantastic to chat with anybody. Uh, that's all I got for today. Hope you guys have a fantastic week. Stay safe out there and make sure you take care of each other. Cheers.